5.8 coordinate proofs, we're going to talk about what coordinate proofs are and how to write them. And we want to also be able to talk about placing figures in a coordinate plane. Uh, we want to place them on the graph in the best way so that we can make it easy on us. So we're going to start by defining what a coordinate proof is and that simply involves placing a geometric figure in a coordinate plane. We use variables to represent the coordinates of a figure because we're talking about um, in general terms. We want to figure out what's happening to a shape. So let's get started. All right, example number one is just going to talk about, kind of start ourselves into a coordinate proof and talking about the best way, best way to put this into a graph so that we can talk about it and find the different side lengths. All right, so um, the first shape they give us is a rectangle. So what we want to do is we want to draw a coordinate plane. Okay, have our x and our y axis. Now I'm looking at a rectangle. Um, for any of these shapes, kind of the, what we want, the best way to start is to start at the origin. Make that one of your, your vertices. So this is 0, 0. Okay. Then um, because you're talking about a rectangle, a rectangle has a length and a width. Right. And so we're talking in general terms, so we're just going to assign a value to the length. I'm going to call that length h units, whatever that number might come out to be. And then I have a width, and I'm just calling, going to use the variable k. All right. So if I start at 0, 0, and I'm drawing a rectangle, I'm going to go horizontally um, h units. So I can kind of imagine, uh, let's say that h is there. So I'm going to make this h0, and that represents my, my length. And then to get my width, I'm going to go up on the y-axis, k units. So let's just put a dot here, and let's say that that's where it's at. Um, the coordinates to this, since I'm at 0, and I go up k units, it's going to be 0k. Okay? And then if I look at where 0k and h0, if I go horizontally and vertically, I want to see where they intersect. They're going to roughly intersect there. So this coordinate here would be h units right, or yeah, h units right and up k units, so this would be h k. Okay, and so that would be my rectangle talking in general terms using 0, 0 as one of the vertices. Next um, example, same thing with example one, except, um, except that we're looking at a scalene triangle. So um, same thing, we'll start off with uh, drawing a coordinate plane. Okay. And like before with the rectangle, same idea, I want to start with 0, 0 if, if possible. So since they didn't give us any restrictions on it, I'm going to go ahead and make that 0, 0 as one of the vertices. And then if I put this on here, I'm going to have some other point, and it would be a good idea to make it easy again, if I put the other point on the x-axis. So I'm going to have a point here, um, and it's going to be some distance, I don't know what it is, um, we'll just call it d0. Good. Now um, the key thing with scalene is that all the side lengths are different. So I want to just pick a point up here somewhere so that I know that all my distances are going to be different. Um, and so I'm going to go over to the right some distance, we'll just call that distance f, and I'm going to go up some distance, and we call that, we'll call that g, right, just to give it a value. And so here would be my scalene triangle. Okay. With one of the vertices being 0, 0. Alright, um, example two, we're starting with, um, we want to write a plan to prove that ray SO bisects angle PSR. And so we're given the coordinates of the vertices for triangle POS and the vertices for triangle ROS. And we've got to show that it, S, ray SO bisects angle PSR. Um, to do that, I have to show that the triangles are congruent. Um, so here's my plan. Let's back up. My plan is to use the side-side-side um, triangle congruence theorem 
to show that triangle POS is congruent to triangle ROS. Okay. And to do that, because it's a coordinate plane, I can find out what these distances are by using the distance formula so that I can prove technically that what I, want, what I want to do is I want to prove that this side is congruent to that side, PS is congruent to RS, um, PO is congruent to RO, and then because of the reflexive property, I would have my SO, my segment SO congruent to my segment SO, so that side, since it's shared, they would connect and so they would be congruent to each other. So we just kind of want to write that down and explain it. Um, so I'm going to use that, use the distance formula. Is what I would do to show um, segment SP is congruent to segment SR. And then we would show segment PO is congruent to segment RO. Again, using the distance formula, it is horizontal, so we could technically just count that out. But it's still, I'm using the distance formula. Um, then we would say segment SO is congruent to segment SO by a reflexive property. Since I have my sides that are congruent using the distance formula and the reflexive, reflexive property, I would use um, the fact that corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. show that angle PSO is congruent to angle RSO. And if these two are congruent, then that means uh, by definition of a bisector, that would mean that ray SO bisects angle PSR. So this would be my plan to how I'm going to solve this and what I'm going to do to prove that ray SO bisects angle PSR. All right, with example three, we're going to take a little step. Uh, we're going to take it a few steps further, and we want to place an isosceles right triangle in a coordinate plane. Find the actual length of the hypotenuse and the coordinates of the midpoint. So um, let's build our coordinate plane here. Now, um, because it's an isosceles right triangle, uh, I'm going to use kind of this first quadrant here. I'm going to make my, one of my points the origin. So I make that 0, 0. Okay. And then I have, since it's isosceles, I'm going to go some distance. Um, we'll call that some distance k. So we'll say k0. And then we're going to go the same distance up vertically, so this would be then 0k, because we went the same units over as we did up, and then I'm going to go across this way. All right, and let's just give it a name, we'll call this um, P, this one can be Q, and this will be point R. All right, so we want the length of the hypotenuse, so it's basically it's asking us for um, the length or the distance between P and R. So using the distance formula, I'm going to have K minus 0 squared plus 0 minus K squared. Okay, so both of this are going to be the square root of 2K squared, which would simplify out to be K square root of 2. Okay. So that's my length, that's the first part of it. PR is equal to K square roots of 2. 
Okay. Now I want to find the midpoint, so M has to be there so that this side is congruent to that side. So we're going to use the midpoint formula for M, and so we're going to have um, 0 plus K divided by 2, and then 0 plus K divided by 2. So that's just going to come out to be K over 2 for the x-coordinate, and K over 2 for the y-coordinate. So my midpoint, again, is k over 2, k over 2. All right, example 4, we're going to have to prove that I have two congruent triangles. Uh, triangle OTU is congruent to triangle UVO. Um, and I went ahead and I gave you a graph for it. Um, first thing I notice when I'm looking at this is that I have two horizontal lines here. And so it's easy to find that length. Um, for OB, the length of OB, I notice that I'm at 0, 0, and then I go H units to the right because my Y values are both 0. So I'm going horizontally. If I'm counting this out, I'm going H units to the right. So the length of OB is H units. Okay. And then if I look up here at the top at TU, I notice again that my... my uh, y values are both k, so that means I'm going horizontally. And so if I'm at m, and I go to m plus h, um, that distance I'm counting h units uh, to the right as well. So the distance from t to u is also h units, which means that segment OV is congruent to segment TU. And then I also know, since TU and OV are both horizontal lines, or segments, I'm, I know that TU, segment TU, and segment OV I know those two are parallel because they have the same slope which is zero. Okay. And what, the reason I want to know that is because if these are parallel, that means I have some alternate interior angles, which tells me that T, angle TUV, TUO excuse me, is congruent to angle VOU because of the alternate interior angles there. So I'm going to say that angle T U O is congruent to angle B O U by the alternate interior angles there. Okay. And then I guess they share that side O U. So I'm going to say O U. Segment OU is congruent to segment OU by the reflexive property. Okay, so I'm going to kind of highlight what I have. I have a segment, I have that, a segment, of course, a pair of corresponding segments that are, or sides that are congruent. I have an angle pair that's congruent, and then I have another side pair. So I'm going to have side, angle, side. Okay, so that tells me then that triangle OTU is congruent to triangle UVO by the side angle side theorem. Okay. So there's my proof. I proved that the two triangles are congruent um, by looking at the length or the distance of these two horizontal lines. And because they were both horizontal, they had the same slope, which means they're parallel. And so I use this line segment OU as my transversal to create these uh, congruent alternate interior angles. And then I use the reflexive property for segment OU to show that it's congruent to itself, which then means that this triangle here, OTU, is congruent to triangle UVO.